I, I wanted to come and give a testimony and a witness to you. A witness is a character witness. And the character witness is of Jesus and, and the Lord. I've been blessed in my life. I've, I'm not here to tell you that one night the Lord's bright light shined on me and I was saved and I fell to my knees and cried and told him I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Lord, and everything else. I have told the Lord, Lord, I'm with you. From almost the beginning, my mama and my daddy are the blessing that I had in my life. My brothers, eh. but but mostly mom and dad. Uh, they brought me up in the church. They taught me how to to pray. They taught me how to teach. They taught me how to hear. My dad taught me how to speak. <laughs> but uh, I've always been close to the Lord in that in that. I've been blessed by them. And that's my character witness for the Lord because he saw fit to put me in a family that cares so much about their children that they keep them close. I want to tell you some things about my life, about our life. My dad was a Methodist preacher, as Hank has already told you. For 42 years he was in the Texas Conference, but he never retired. He came over to Leesville, and Jake Olmstead was the preacher here at the time. Jake came to our house at least once a week to visit with Dad because he really liked talking to Daddy. Dad went over to Burkeville every other week to talk to a little community church that was a slave church back in the days. And he would preach there every other Sunday. He filled in the pulpit here a couple of times, too. Y'all all have heard him, and y'all all know what kind of man he was. There's a couple of stories I want to tell you about him. When he was in the uh, military during World War II, he was in a close situation where he nearly lost his life, but the weapon that the German had misfired, and Dad was able to get out of the situation. And he said, Lord, you get me out of this, and I guarantee you I will serve you. Well, he got back to the United States, he, and him and Mom got married, and he worked out at Fort Polk for a little while, and then they said, we don't need you anymore. So they moved over to Beaumont, and went to work. he went to work for Sun Oil over there. I think that's right, isn't it, Mom, Sun Oil? And he was making pretty good money but he wasn't satisfied, and he couldn't figure out what was wrong or why he wasn't satisfied. One Wednesday night, he w went out walk. He told Mama, I want to go out for a walk, and he went out walking, passed by the Methodist church, and they happened to be having services in the church, and the doors were open because it was a summer night, and Dad sat on the steps and listened to him. So there he remembered the commitment he had made to the Lord. And he came back and told Mama, and that's why she's a good woman, told Mama, said, Bobby, this doesn't sound right, but I'm, I'm, I want to go into ministry. I want to fill the pulpit. I've got to go back to school. I've got a lot of things to do. Mama said, whatever you want to do. And she followed him. That right there should tell you something that as witnesses for Christ, as witnesses for the church, we are all witnesses. That man, 42 years of ministry because he sat outside a Methodist church in Beaumont, Texas and heard them speaking and was reminded of his commitment to the Lord. Another time, Daddy showed a lot of strength. We've had tragedies in our family. We've had things happen that shouldn't happen. Uh, good Christian people like mom and dad and sons who care about their parents and everything else. We lost my youngest brother when he was six years old. And we had the services for him on a Thursday. 
And on Sunday morning, Dad was standing in the pulpit teaching the love of Christ and the importance of God in people's lives. So you can't tell me that the man didn't believe because he believed in everything God could give and everything Christ could do. And we all live that way at times. I remember an eighth grade teacher, and, and oh, I want to tell the preacher's daughter something right now. This is just to, to let you know that in small towns, your mom and daddy know what you've done 30 minutes before you get home. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. So, you know, sort of, sort of watch over your shoulder and be careful and just... The easiest way to do it is just do the right thing and you won't have a problem. But uh, uh, there are so many things in life that, that you brought up in the church. I can remember Mother taking Mike outside the church on a Sunday morning and waylaying him for being bad in church. The problem was it was summertime and the windows were open. And she went right outside the window here. And the louder Mike screamed, the louder Dad got. So <laughs> needless, needless to say, it was a rousing service. But we were disciplined. But what I wanted to tell you, in the eighth grade, there was a teacher, Ms. Alexandria, I'll never forget her. She wasn't beautiful, and I wasn't in love with her by any means. Matter of fact, I didn't much care for her at all. But she said something that stuck with me over all the years, she's told me that the way you act in public reflects on your mom and daddy. If you act sorry, if you steal, if you lie, if you cheat, if you don't care about other people, that tells me your mom and daddy aren't worth a flip. So I never wanted my mother and dad to not be important to other people too. I wanted them to know that my mother and dad were good people and they brought me up the right way. So as we go along through life, that's my character witness. Now as a testimony, there are some truths through a testimony. I've got to go to court on the 19th to give a testimony of a young man, I'm not a young man, a man who escaped. Just so happened I drove him to his escape. That's beside the point. <laughs> no, now that's another story for another time. But anyway, the testimony I have I, are some beliefs I have. I believe that Jesus and God are all important in all our lives. I believe that you can make mistakes, but you can be forgiven as long as you know. Jesus and God or Jesus is God I believe in not tempting the Lord whenever I was working offshore we flew out in a helicopter every time we'd go offshore we flew out and we flew back in and every time I sat by the same guy who really aggravated the fire out of me he'd tell me he said well the way I figure it is the Lord is going to take me. He can be in a helicopter as well as on the ground. I told him, I said, well, he may be wanting to take you, and I don't want to go along for the trip. <laughs> so I don't believe in tempting the Lord. I don't believe in testing the Lord. I believe that the devil works and Satan works harder in the church than he ever worked out on the streets. Now how, how in the world does the devil work in the church? Little tongue wagging goes a long way. I don't like the preacher because, or I saw the preacher do this when he didn't, or I know so-and-so is supposed to be a Christian. I'm not going to sit in the same pew with a hypocrite. That's another thing my dad said. 
He said, you got an option. You can sit in the same pew with a hypocrite or you can burn in hell with them the rest of your eternity. Whichever way you want to go. So I, I believe that the devil does work his hardest right here in the church through procrastination. I would sing in the choir, but I just don't have time. I would sing in the choir, but I can't carry a note in a bucket. Preacher's up there every Sunday. There's no reason for everybody not to be up there. That's it. <laughs> helps the back row. He helps the back row. But we have a good time in the choir. It's a good Christian group, even though sometimes we may not seem like it we'd have too much fun <laughs> but we do have a lot of fun in our in our participation in the in the church and in the services i believe in you as members i believe that you can help people to survive two years ago october i had a heart attack two years ago october i had open heart surgery two years ago october I met the preacher's future wife. Two years ago, October, I met a lot of good members that came to visit me. And you'll never know how much that means to an individual. I was over in Lake Charles. That's an hour drive one way. And they didn't stay more than 15, 20 minutes. I wasn't that entertaining, I guess, they left. <laughs> but, but to make a two-hour drive for a 15-minute cheer-up session, it sure means a lot to you. Rich Buck, Barbara, is over here at Woodlands. If somebody would go by and visit with him just to say hello, it means so much. You'll never know how much it means to an individual. I believe the church is the ministry. We have a leader, we have a, we have a man in Hank, and he's a good man. I believe in him. Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> but I believe that we as ministers in the church need to go and need to participate in our community and need to survive and help others to survive this onslaught that we've had of non-Christian, non-believing attitudes in this world today. Amen. We as witnesses through our walks, through our words, through our deeds, through the way we treat people, that means so much. I want someone to say of me, that, that Neff, he's a nice guy. He really treats everybody the same, whether they're high on the ladder or whether they're low on the ladder. And believe me, I work out amongst a lot of low ladders. But they all respect me because I treat them with the same type of respect. There are some you can't. There are some that are criminals. There are some that are going to be criminal. It doesn't matter what you do because they know nothing else. It doesn't matter what family they come from. The devil got a hold of them, and you can preach to them and you can teach to them, but you can't reach them. Somebody can, so you've got to keep trying. I believe in a lot of things and a lot of ideas that we all have, and a lot of faith carries us a long way. And I want to thank you for listening to me tonight. I'm not too late. I'm almost early, really. We can get choir over with pretty quick. <laughs> but I want you to know that as a church, We've got the best church in Leesville. As a family, we've got the best family in Leesville. 
I was laying on a table getting my heart cath. A young lady was sitting at the head of that table stroking my head. And I asked Dr. Matthews, do I have to have this? And she said, but beats the alternative. She taught me into it. My dad was crazy about Marsha and thought she was a good person. And a matter of fact, she, he talked her into getting up in the choir. He picked my seat this and it's her turn to pick somebody to get into the choir. <laughs> but all in all, I'm, I'm here to tell you that as a witness for God, I'm proud, very proud. As a servant of the Lord, I hope and, I hope and pray that I can serve as well as I can, as, as well as possible. And I hope and pray I never say no to anyone in need of hearing about Jesus and the Lord. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you for hearing me. And would you pray with me? Our Lord and our Father, we're so grateful to you for all the blessings. We all have blessings from you, and we all have strength from you. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all the things that you do for us every day. We thank you for our family, for putting us together with others, with, uh, with other Christians. Now, Lord, we ask that we go out, we be able to serve you, to witness for you, and to do what you would have us do, whether we agree with it or not. Thank you, Lord. Amen.